o'clock hour of vent entry search with Eckerd Fire Tactics. You got to wiggle, your alarm's going off. It's real time, it's unscripted. Bobby, what are we doing? Uh, so we're going to go over uh, some better search techniques. You're going to see a three-man engine company arrive, and uh, they have a, a fire on the first floor and reported people trapped, and they're going to make a, a firefighter's going to make entry to the second floor. Then enter search. Yes, you go opposite or above the fire. Yes, it's without the protection of a hose line for the searcher. But before you make entry in that building, please know what the, the engine company's doing. If there's not one available or they're on their way or whatever and you got to make entry, yes, get in that room. If it's tenable, search. If it's not tenable, shut the door. We've always isolated. We've been isolated since this shit started. So if it's untenable and very hot, search your way over to the door, shut it, get your search going, get back out. All right? It's a very simple task performed on fire grounds every day. There's probably one happening right now in the United States of America, and it's going flawlessly. Don't be intimidated by some of the stuff you see about it. We're going to show you here today. You make sure when you're going to go make window entry, when you're training, you got to understand there, in a perfect world, there's things up against windows. You're not going to just make entry into something very clear. There's challenges. When you take a window, clear it all the way. When you're doing your 30-second drills, be ready to put your mask on, on a ladder, on the rig, whatever, okay? So you're able to do this stuff, your gloves on, everything. It's a very fast-paced drill, but you're going to see you're going to see two searches happen. Because, you know, my bet is, because I know the guy, he's the officer, he's going to search off the line. So let's rock and roll. We're ready to roll. We're going to get moving now. The guys are going to start tell stretching. Tell them, let's go. Tell Remember, them we're YouTube coming Live, in. Facebook Live. On the radio, Put tell your them comments, we're chat, in. and questions on the YouTube Live feed. We'll get them answered as we go. I'm going to put my mask on now, everybody, because this is going to be fast. Peace. <laughs> I'm mic'd up, everybody. <laughs> All right. Got engine company going, moving with a purpose. You got it. Tristan, again, move, movement's important. You can see that they're moving, they're moving with each other. All right? Tristan is taking the ladder, main focus, one man beam raise. He's right up to the he's right up to the engine point. Turn the ladder into a spot. And as you can see, Tristan knows he's gonna make uh, Entry into the window. He's masking up before he goes in. All right, checking his straps, getting ready to go. Quick 30 second drill. He's rocking and rolling. Helmet on, he's rocking and rolling. You can see the engine company's, the engine company also is getting ready. All right. It's important to watch Tristan's movement and the engine company move. They're moving simultaneously. That's very important. They're moving simultaneously. clear, he took the sash, he's ready to make entry. You can see a size of a fire, you can see Jeff off, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff's making a first floor search and he's going to hit the second floor after he's done searching. Alright, as you can see, don't crawl it, as you can see, don't crawl it. Alright, we're going to head upstairs, we're going to head upstairs. I'm going to note the search Tristan's making. Tristan moving. What's up, man? I need a claw. We got to wipe the lens. Make your shirt. I got a thermal lens camera, you'll be able to see this later, but Tristan's making a very aggressive primary search. He's checking all areas. The building's open up now, so he has some space to see. And he's moving. 
He's moving to the third floor. He's moving up. Again, you make entry. You don't, if it's tenable, you just don't have to search the room you're in. You search the rest of the area. I can hear the two searchers talking outside. They did, they did locate a victim and they're making egress. They're making egress right now. Jeff's taking him right out the open interior stairwell because it's the fastest mode and the fastest way. Tristan's also going to egress the open interior stairwell. All right? And the primary search was complete. So that was a quick one. I gotta find the camera so you can see me, so we can talk. But that was a very quick one. But again, I'm gonna try to get the window reset for you guys. I can find the guy. We're gonna use it again because we're gonna uh, we're gonna reset the window and just go over, uh, show him again how to take it again. All right? Yeah, no problem. All right. All right, uh, give me some. Yeah. Yeah, give it again. Yeah, keep it going, because we're going to, can you reset the window? Yeah, reset the window for me. Get the fire going, because we're just going to have them demonstrate from the outside one more time, right? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, what do you guys think? We're mic'd up, so we'll talk about it. I don't know. We're, uh, I'm standing here with the team, so I got the knob and the officer, been our search guy. I mean, pretty basic fire, right? Nothing crazy, nothing thrown at you. I mean, making entry into the window. Uh, what was what was the difficult part? What was your thought process going up to it? Um, going up was I knew I had a window, to, a room to my left, and I saw fire coming up the stairwell. So I made a quick sweep of the immediate area where I came in. I went to the left. I was in there a little longer than I would like to be due to low visibility. Popped back out. By then, everything was opened up. Fire was getting knocked down, so I could move a lot quicker. Got up to the third floor, and the officer had already found the baby up there. Yeah. So Jeff, just walk through. Just walk through your emotions. I know John had a lot of the fire knocked down, but you know, you obviously searched off the line. I mean, being limited staffing, did that play into that for you? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, he got the fire knocked, so now we got to get the fire floor searched. I know he was upstairs on the second floor and got the first floor search and was able to meet up with him on the second floor and make the third. Yeah, and then John, you were on the nozzle. I mean, knowing, knowing that you got a firefighter entering above you, are you, were you was your thought like, I got to get, I got to make that push, get water on the fire type deal? Yeah, as soon as I saw that fire to my right, I knocked it down real fast. You never want to pass the fire because it was fired to my right and fire in front of me. So I knocked the fire down to the right of me and then proceeded to the fire in front of me. Cool, and again, it's this is, it's a basic, a basic fire. Nothing, nothing that we're throwing at you is, over crazy with scenarios. It's all very basic movement. But I think the one thing to note too, when, when you saw the cameraman come through, I don't know where they're at. Um, so when you saw when you saw them come through, you saw the movement. You saw the movement. And what we're going to do, Jordan, we're going to reset the window. Let's do it. They're going to get a crank in, and I think if we can get the cameraman out here, or I can maybe get up on the ladder too. Yep. You know, I'll, I'll take I'll take the the, um, the roof hook away from him, and I'll have him just do it with a pro bar to just show. You know, I know sometimes you might not have a, a roof hook. You know, it is which. You can you can do it. With, you, there's multiple tools, but you know again, I think I think the I think the one thing to note here was the movement on the fire ground and how they moved together, and then how um, you know Tristan elected. If, if your if your preference where you want to mask up at, I've been in situations where you know I mask up on the ladder before. You know, obviously, level that's obviously the most. We'll get them over here. We'll reset it. We'll go through. Heat, you're gonna you're gonna search away the door, close it, and 
Do your search yeah, and get out. You can't, you can't always, you can't just rely on acronyms for everything. Exactly. Isolation, Absolutely, I agree. Isolation is part of it, but it's everything is circumstantial. Going, the same thing with masking up on the ladder versus the ground. Everything's circumstantial based on the, the situation that you're up against. Absolutely, good. Uh, a couple other things. A lot of comments about how underutilized and how it doesn't take place. Well, I think I, I think a lot of it takes place. I I, I got to be honest with you. There's fear mongering going on. Here. I agree. With there's you. fear mongering. You know, they say they say it's for experienced firefighter. It, would I say my most experienced firefighter there? Absolutely. What if I don't have experienced firefighters? What if I have an 18 year old kid who's fresh out of fire one? This is he can search one room very easily. He just goes through, you know, get in there and get out. But uh, again. You need to realize when you go in people's houses, when you go in rooms, think about how your own house is with furniture and things of that nature. When you're in the room, you're going to encounter furniture, you're going to encounter whatever. You're not going to land just on an open spot. You might hit a radiator, a bed, a dresser, all that stuff. So Bob, let's talk about entry through the window. Give me some tips as to we go feet first, head first. So we're going, to, we're going to talk about that when we do this. But Excellent. I mean, I'm a head first guy, Tristan. Depends on the situation. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it depends how much you got to reach over the sash or the sill. I'm sorry. Um, you know, there could be also, you know, I'm going to try to get in head first if, if I can. If not, maybe I got to go in leg first. But head first is more comfortable for me. And head first allows me an area real quick if there's somebody right there. Good. One more thing before we get up and redo because they're still setting the prop. Camera. Talk about thermal imaging camera for VES. Yeah. The so, of it. yeah, if, if you're able to have one, you know, obviously you can't, you can't uh, use your camera on glass. It's useless. So, you know, when the searcher gets in there, to acclimate himself with the room, because that's one of the biggest things we do in firefighting, right? Because well, we operate in, in low visibility. When we get inside, you kind of want to paint the picture of the room. If you got a camera, boom, you can fire right up. And if you're worried about the isolation or the heat, you know, the FLIR camera right here gives you temperature. So, you know, if you get in and it's it's white and the temperature thing's at 1,200 degrees, because it says it right here in the corner, you know, then you, you know, you know you're, you're in a situation where, okay, Maybe I need to get the hell out of here. So, anything else? Good. Yeah, uh, we've got some questions. Maybe while we're doing in the search, if, uh, we can get the uh, thermal imaging spec on the camera also. People get a little more orientation if we could do that, maybe in the next scenario. Uh, some other conversations. Obviously, I think that the conversation that's going around after the conversation we just had was very simply, you got to, the situation dictates, as Tristan said. 100%. How we operate. 100%. But, you know, and, and Tristan, I, I watched him from the camera. He, he was aggressively searching, and... Aggressively searching means start your search, get on it. You don't need your hand on the wall. I mean, Jeff, Jeff met him up here. You know, Jeff, Jeff was acting as the officer. He went in, he swept the first floor very fast because he had some visibility to work for him. Tristan did not. So his search took a little longer, but they were able to meet. So, you know, just because just you're going in the first floor doesn't mean that you're not assigned to the first, you know, that you're just assigned to the first floor. Keep going. Simultaneous searches need to happen throughout the building. Anything else, Jeremy? Uh, yeah, real quick, uh, we're just scrolling through here. I've sent me a couple questions about you said the tick doesn't work on glass. Maybe yeah. a little clarification on that. No, it, it's, it, it, it's not, you're not going to get full clarity on glass of what's behind it with a tick. Same thing with water. I, I, I've, I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, false information come when you when you go to glass. Even a building. I know people use thermal imaging cameras for the exterior of a building. I mean, that's cool if you want to see fire travel. But if the building's on fire, it's going to glow, glow in different locations. I don't think it's, I don't think using the good. tick on the outside is really no, beneficial. Good. Don't good you agree, clarity. Tristan? I would. Yeah. Good clarity. Good. Okay, we're getting the prop back in place. Uh, a lot of good conversation going on. Uh, let's see if we got any other questions. Bob coming in. Uh, discuss pulling the line up the ladder to back up your VES if waste need be. Time, waste of time. Waste of time. Why, why would you? The guys, the guys going in the window. Why would you put water on them? That and waste. the fact that VES is supposed to be quick and fast. Yeah, it's right? a waste, I mean, of, waste of time. In and out. In and out. Waste of time. Okay, agree. Good. Absolutely. Good. Uh, I think no. right now that's good. We got a good stream going. We got a lot of people tuning in. The uh, window. If you turn around, they're resetting the window right now. Bones is up there doing his thing. So, and this is uh, just real quick. I can I can plug the uh, yeah. fire firehouse fabricators uh, fabrication. You know he um, he was graciously. You know we bought the window from him, and uh, you know it, it's a really cool prop to just introduce the fact that you need to take the entire window. And uh, he's a, he's a gentleman to work with. Let me tell you, very very simple. And that's firehouse fabricators. Yep. Okay. Good. Good to know. We'll mark that in the in the reflective uh, in the in the uh, feed here. You're not getting air temp, you're temp, whatever. I'm just reading through real quick. We got this the chat going here. Um, I love the dialogue, guys. Ask questions. Uh, a lot of questions about thermal imaging camera. I think it's an underused piece of equipment on the it ground. It absolutely, guys. 
here's my thing about thermal imaging, and I speak to it a lot. You know, um, I, I remember when a thermal imaging camera wasn't a thing, then, then they got us the big Buller ones. New Jersey, remember they bought every fire yeah, company yeah. one in the state of New Jersey. And, you know, they have a battery. It's technology. If you can have technology working for you, hell yes, use it. Hell yes. But don't rely on it because technology always fails. You can start the saw every morning and every Thursday at your firehouse. When you go to use it and the saw doesn't start, what do you do? You go old school. You go conventional. Yeah. So this is, don't use thermal imaging as a crutch. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. And let's hit one more thing before we scary up this ladder. Uh, we're talking about turning windows into doors. So if you're, on, if you're doing VES, you get a victim removal. Can we just talk about the victim to the window? What's the best case scenario? What are we doing? About? So we're, we're talking limiting staffing. If they're talking turning a window in a door, my interpretation that would be chainsawing down the, the side of the, yeah. Yes. So um, to me, that's, I mean, if you have the personnel to do it, have at it. You're not going to do it. You're only going to do it in one type of building construction now, and that's wood frame. Right. So it's a type three ordinary. You're not chainsawing the side of building. So it's kind of a waste in that type of situation. So, but to me, we found a victim. It was a baby, and uh, Jeff found her on the up on the uh, third floor, and we were able to remove her through the open interior stairwell. Dead weight is dead weight. If you ever had your hands on somebody that's unconscious, no matter their size, even a child, even a child is is tough to move. Um, you know, and we could talk about that later. We do have some guys here, you know, have been in that situation. Open interior stairwell would be my thing, but if you can go to the window, remember, you got to remove them out of the window yourself. You got to get them to the window, get them up over the sill, get them onto the ladder. You're limited staffed. Would you disagree? Agree? I would like to hear Tristan's thoughts on, on removal. Getting a body, an unconscious person, out of a window, you're going to need three to four people. Right. Bringing them out the interior stairwell, you have gravity to your advantage as opposed to at your disadvantage with the ladder because of the angle and the obvious ramifications if you drop that. Sure, thing. sure. You can bring them through the interior stairs. Gravity is to your advantage. You need less people to get them out. And most likely, if you do need more people to get them out, that's where they're going to be. And and, and, a, and a great point to touch on, too, I mean, uh, you know, with with victim removal and survivability and all that stuff, um, you know, when, when you die, it burns it's usually when your airway is compromised, right? So you want to get somebody out of the building and out of the ideation environment as fast as you can. So if the fire is on the second floor, if you get to that building, if you, I'm sorry, if you get that person to the first floor, you just started their survival that much faster. So, you know, mess around, get them out of the window. Like Tristan said, you could drive them. Getting them to the first floor, all you got to do is take them from the second floor onto the stairwell, and they're breathing fresh air. They're breathing fresh air. You can start CPR on them right there. You can do all kinds of stuff. But when you find somebody, your search is not over. Go back up and continue your primary search, people. It's not it. Well, there's one, there's two, there's two, there's three, there's three, there's four. Good points. Good points. All right, Pop. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna get so, back. So yeah, to I'm gonna. You know, I, I just wanna. I, I want to show because Tristan did it fast. Um, you know, the windows tough, and not all windows, not all windows break like every window. Especially if you buy, if you got a new window installed, it's got hurricane panes in it. It's got hurricane panes in it, and it's thick. And I mean, personally, I I've swung a blown object at a window and had to come back and hit me in the face once. So I mean, it happens. Tristan, right? I mean, we're laughing, but it's it's reality. So, you know, not all, not all windows break the same way. So, Tristan, what he's going to do, he's going to take, a, he's going to take this pro bar and he's just going to go through a window removal nice and slowly. He can, he, can walk, he can walk you through it up there and talk you through it. Um, but, you know, the sa you got to understand the window part, okay? You know, you got the panes, you got the, you got the sash, you got the jam, all that stuff. So, Tristan's going to go up there and walk you through just removing the window. I think it's important to show. Okay. thing taking a window is I'm going to aim for the sash. I want to be below the window. Obviously there's an IDLH atmosphere and it's coming up and I want to be cognizant of the glass that's going to come down, which is why I have my gloves on, my mask strung behind me. If I don't have a mask on, as I hit, I'm going to, as I strike, I'm going to use the helmet to protect myself like this. Glass stops moving. Now I've cleared the window. Entirely, I can mask up. I can go inside. Tristan, you want to demonstrate just to mask up on the ladder for him so they can see that. It's so vital to get your 30-second drills down pat, to know how to mask up, to know how to set your helmet, your hood, your gloves. 
because you never know the environment and where your masking up is going to take place. Tristan's on a ladder right now. He might not even have thought when he showed up to work in the morning that he'd be masking up on a ladder, but that's what it is. That's reality. He's in a realistic situation right now. So, you know, it is what it is. And the better you are at masking up, the better you're going to be with your gloves on, all that stuff. You should know how to do everything with your fire gloves on, period. Well, up. So this is the downfall to doing it this way. And now, I'm tangled up. Again, raw, unscripted. There we go. Absolutely. He just had he just had it he just had an issue, a deficiency, and he just overcame it. Knowing your equipment. Knowing your equipment, knowing how to use it with your gloves on. Later Amazing. Up, but here I am. Now he's gonna make entry into the window. Sound. In he goes and he's searching. In he goes and he's searching. Good. Bob, we got a couple questions. That was fantastic, Tristan. Thank you. A couple questions. Best equipment, best tools for VES. What do we want to have with us? Bring that six foot hook over here. There's not there's not much you can't do with a with a six foot steel hook and a pro bar. I think it's two things. And uh, this is a this is a tip I picked up from uh, Lieutenant Mike Scotto uh, out of New York City, and it's a, it's a great tip, and especially for the, uh, especially for the, um, I'm looking at you like that camera. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great tip, um, and I just learned this about two years ago. I never thought of it, and uh, Mike Scott is a great guy, great fireman, and uh, he, he said, for the inexperienced firefighter, when you go in the room, if you're really that nervous about the situation, take your six-foot hook, hook it on the windowsill, and when you go your room, around the room, when you come back to the hook, you know you did your search and you're out. I was blown away by that tip. So you're going to be able to take you're going to be able to take the window with this with your pro bar, one piece pro bar. Take your three piece if you have a dumpster around your firehouse, take your three pieces, walk them there and throw them in it right now. Throw them in it. Get a one piece bar. These are the only things that are it's fail safe. Fail safe, okay? You not not much you can't do with you know without these two Jeff, would you disagree or agree? Anything you know? Nope, absolutely. You want a blunt object. You want a blunt object for the for the force of the window. Good. Good question. Good question. Uh, a lot of conversation about the equipment and so on. I think we hit it, man. I hit I think we hit it out of the park. Any last words on this? Or are we doing Did you plan did you plan window? your helmet uh tangle? No. <laughs> no. But so, that's why I didn't do it in the first place. There you go. So we showed you both, we showed you what could happen with both, and we showed you how to overcome. So guys. When there's an issue, a deficiency, slow down, work the problem. Slow down, work the problem. Mentally, physically, take it easy, work the problem. Good. Absolutely, man. Sounds good. I think you guys did a fantastic job on this. Went from stretch to line, water on the fire, search above, VES. Talked about the equipment, talked about the importance of thermal imaging. Uh, any last words? No, that's it. We're going to break for lunch. We're going to get reset here and uh, do our thing. Uh, come back in the afternoon for forceful entry. That is going to 1 o'clock. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, the two the two guys we're throwing at they had they haven't seen what we have behind it and it's going to be uh it's going to be pretty cool so and then we got our door prop over here uh, you're going to be able to jump on the door prop afterwards so uh, see you guys.